jobs in Geelong. Very hard hit town indeed at the moment. Anyway, we're going to talk more about health right now. And as we've been discussing this morning, Health Minister Peter Dutton is building the case for major changes to health funding and Medicare. He's been building this case by pointing out how costs have risen over the last decade. He says that in the past 10 years, the cost of Medicare has gone up 120%. The pharmaceutical benefits scheme, 90%. Hospital care, 80%. This, he says, is unsustainable. And, in fact, he's gone so far as to say, yes, he does think those who can afford to pay more should pay more. That includes considering a $6 co-payment to visit the GP. With us now, the president of the Australian Medical Association, Dr Steve Hambleton. Thanks for your time. Does the minister have a point here that the rising costs over the last decade are unsustainable if they continue? Well, it's certainly the right time to have a conversation about rising costs, and we do see lots of rises. Now, there is some good news hidden in those uh, figures as, uh, as well, and we need to think about that as well. Uh, we've actually seen a cost per visit to GPs for individual Australians flatline for the last five years, so that's a piece of good news. Our PBS spend has actually come back a little bit because of the uh, coming off patent of some of our very expensive drugs. But the Minister is right. We do need to have a conversation about costs in the future. And unless we turn around some of the drivers of those healthcare costs, it is going to make it very difficult for Australia to afford those expenses. And when he does say that he thinks uh, those who can pay more should pay more, what's your reaction to that? Well, already Australia is placed about fifth in the world for out-of-pocket expenses when it comes to their own health, so we're already up there. Now, people do think about the, the decisions they make when they, when they actually enter the health system. I guess what we're saying is we've got to think about what the drivers of healthcare costs are. We've got to step back a little bit before that and make sure that we deal with things like tobacco, alcohol, overnutrition and under-exercise. It's not just the health portfolio that needs to focus on healthcare costs, it's the other portfolios as well. We can increase exercise, increase our health literacy and make sure that we don't get to hospital because that's where the most expensive part of the health system is. Now, the AMA, of course, represents doctors, so you can understand arguing the case against um, increasing the cost of seeing the doctor. But the minister makes the point that patients already pay a co-payment of sorts for pharmaceuticals. They pay a co-payment to see for their private health insurance. Uh, they, um, uh, many Australians, he says, pay a co-payment to see the doctor already. What about everybody, though? Should there be at least some nominal payment to go to the GP? Well, I think that's a very, uh, it's one of the levers the government can pull. We've got to be very careful if you use a blunt instrument uh, like, like payments, and in particular in primary health care, that we don't get perverse outcomes. There are think tanks internationally. The uh, Lancet think tank is actually saying if you want to increase the efficiency of your health system, you lower the barriers to primary health care. You don't lift them. Now, people that defer visits to the GP, that might be discretionary, but it also might be important. And the evidence shows that they don't go for both. And if they end up in hospital, that's going to be a, a downside because it's going to make the health system more expensive. So we do need to spend each, each dollar efficiently, but any changes we make, we need to examine all the possible outcomes and some of them. What about this idea of uh, allowing private health insurance to cover a visit to the GP? Well, that's something that all governments have, res have resisted over the many years. Now, there's no doubt we need to join up our health system. Our public hospitals need to interface with GPs. The same with private hospitals. They need to interface with GPs as well. Private health insurers are there, but we don't want to unbalance the, the good things about our system. One of the very good things is that relationship, that longitudinal relationship with the GP. So the AMA is very interested in exploring opportunities for private health insurers to join up the health system, to support the GP to do their work, not compete with the GP or divert the patient somewhere else. There are opportunities there. We need to have one health system, whether it's public, whether it's private, make sure we connect with primary care. Because at the moment, uh, private health insurance cannot cover something that, that Medicare does. That, that's basically the rule, isn't it? That um, it, it, Medicare does cover a visit to the GP, technically, if you bulk bill. Uh, but if you had private health insurance covering a GP visit, uh, certainly for those who can afford to have private health insurance, that would be an attractive option. It certainly would be, but we've got to make sure we have equity of access. People do get access to care. Now, the private health insurers have got a lot of disease management programs that we could engage for our patients to make sure that their diabetes is well managed, that we can minimise the risk of um, obesity and overweight because that drives things like diabetes, heart disease and stroke. Uh, we need to join those things up. We need to make sure we don't distort the market, though, 
and that's, so we, we can carefully manage these things. And we're very happy to work with the minister to make sure that every single health dollar is spent efficiently. Is he looking in the right areas? I mean, you've pointed out the need for a unified system here. Yeah. Is he, at the moment, from what you've heard, looking at the right area of, of the health budget? Well, I would say that uh, focusing on primary health care uh, and putting barriers there is not the right approach. Uh, helping GPs to look after chronic disease, that's the major burden in our community, is. Medicare is 30 years old. We've seen uh, some change in uh, Medicare over the last few years that we need to support. Um, uh, putting barriers up, probably not the, uh, the, best, uh, the best solution. Our public hospitals are the, are the most rapidly growing area in the system and that means we've got to make sure we run them efficiently. Uh, but, but more broadly, we've got to step back from all that and say, well, what are the drivers of costs? End of life care is something we should talk to the minister about to make sure that we're actually making appropriate choices, uh, that, uh, that the palliative care option is supported. Because we've actually looked at that uh, final stages of life and uh, the difference between choosing another drug and actually providing good support for palliative care, quality of life, emotional, physical and spiritual, actually people live longer and it is less expensive. But it does mean spending money in the primary care area and uh, if we can reorient our spend, we can make our system more sustainable. Just a final question on a separate matter. The um, health consumers um, health uh, website that the government pulled down amid some controversy over the role of the Assistant Minister's Chief of Staff. On the website itself, would it have made a big difference, do you think? Well, yes, I think the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, look, look uh, people wouldn't necessarily have accessed the website, but the website was very smart. In behind it was a whole lot of uh, calculations enabling industry to put those stars on their product. And we may have seen uh, early, uh, early um, adopters put those stars on to get a market advantage. Look, it's all about helping consumers make the right decisions. And it's, it's the very people who don't understand those complicated uh, labels on the back of the food products that would have benefited from the stars on the front. You don't need a, a degree in nutrition to be able to work out which, which, which product is better for you, but you do if you're looking at the back of the product. So this is a really important uh, assistant for keeping healthcare costs down. Equally, we want to see a national summit on alcohol because that's another big cost driver. Yeah, and there's a whole other conversation in that one. AMA President Dr Steve Hambledon, good to talk to you this morning. Thanks for that.